Welcome back. We're going to take a quick look at today's crypto top 30. Yesterday I didn't do it. Uh, so today we're going to cover the top 20 and also the top 30. We'll be covering OKB, Polygon. Uh, we did Solana because Solana was in the top 10 on Monday. So we've already covered it. Uh, we're going to skip it. We're going to move on to Polkadot, uh, Shiba Inu, Litecoin, Tron, Avalanche, Uniswap, Cosmos Hub, Toncoin, Chainlink, Leo, Monero, Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin Cash, Stellar Lumens, and then we'll end with Quant at number 30. Let's get straight into it. So for OKB against BDC, uh, we're still in an uptrend. We're still above the skinny pink line. Hee hee. We still have a target over here at uh, 0, uh, 33,000. Let's just say it's 33,000, right? Uh, it's easier. Yeah, at, at 33,000, actually it's 330,000 Satoshis, but we just say it's 33,000, right? So there's still our target over here at 33,000 uh, and we are at 15,000. I'm not so sure what's going to happen. Uh, I think we'll probably maintain our bullish uh, bias uh, and you know, there could be a correction coming on for OKB against BDC. I, I can't say for sure, but feels like this is something that probably could happen. Um, OKB against USDT, same thing as well. We still have our target at $75. We're at $35. We're stopping short of taking out the highs over here. So there is some resistance. So the price is facing some kind of a resistance at this point of time. So yeah, so I, I will still expect some sort of a retrace. Maybe uh, it will be a soft one, you know, just a very small one uh, before we hit higher or this could be actually a big one, right? Uh, the thing is we don't know. BDC is going to determine whether if it is going to be a full send or if there is going to be a retrace so yeah but we are still bias bullish for okb on both pairs okb is one of the very few rare puppies that's still in a bullish trend most of the coins are in a bearish trend but not okb moving on will be matic matic against btc we are yeah matic has really sliced back under the support which is not good which is uh you know we would prefer matic to stay above the support but yeah now that it is down so yeah i guess we will have to uh, adapt to the situation you know we might get a head and shoulders over here and we could still head lower good thing is we did not take out the highs over here so this whole thing could actually be a let's just shift it here hey, hey this could actually be a ascending triangle right this could be value one we come down for value number two right we get value number three Boom, full send. Uh, but yeah, it's I just don't see it yet at this point of time. So yeah, you gotta be very, very careful. But to be honest, I would very much prefer Matic uh, to do something like this, right? Uh, for us to see a proper consolidation, build our um, foundation before we launch the rocket, right? Okay, doesn't look like rocket. This look like a dick and balls. So. <laughs> My point is, my point is, uh, we would prefer it, you know, if there is a proper consolidation, right? To build a strong base, to build the foundation, to blast off from for Matic. Best case scenario, in my opinion, even if we were to drop, okay, this is, I'm purely guessing, right? Even if we were to drop, like, let's say 30 or 40%, right, against BDC. I think this is good. Uh, in the long run of things, I honestly think this is good. So, we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. But we've already broken the support, so... Yeah, <laughs> I think we're probably going to hit lower. I'm not so sure about Matic against USDT uh, because for Matic against USDT, we are above the skinny pink line. So if anything, you know, the, the potential for a continuation higher is actually there. But it all depends upon BDC. If BDC starts dropping, then very likely Matic is going to drop as well. Uh, there's a very clear support over here, right? Very, very clear support, uh, which I think could get broken eventually, right? Uh, we are already forming a potential. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen. A potential head and shoulders, right? If you see the price come back down towards the support, then yep, I guess it is gonna be a head and shoulders. If we were to drop 40% against BTC, you're gonna see Matic drop even more uh, against USD, right? So 55% is going to tie in very well with our target over here. Because usually when the coins drop, um, alts drop faster than BTC and 39% for Matic BDC could be like 40-50% for Matic USDT so 55% is just about right and yeah <laughs> but again even if you do fall right uh, towards 45 cents my fear my fear is that Matic could form a gigantic descending triangle and then we head lower right uh, best case best case scenario is we don't form a gigantic descending triangle we just keep dropping right this whole thing could be an a b c and then we see some sort of a recovery best case scenario right uh, but of course even better case would be we just keep rising right uh, and then we just consolidate and continue higher 
and you make an argument for an inverse head and shoulders, not exactly the high quality, but you can consider it from a far, far point of view. You know, if, if you're watching, uh, I mean, if you're looking at Matic's chart from space, then yeah, maybe you can say, mm, I think this looks like a flat <laughs> uh, resistance. Yeah. So my point is we need this to happen first, right? We need this to happen. Yeah, but we don't see it yet, so okay, we can't be making moves until we see clarity in the markets. Uh, it's, it's just, you know, I'm still very bias bearish uh, at this point of time. It's just that there's a rally right now. There's some possibilities of uh, the bearish trend, uh, you know, shifting bullish, and we are monitoring things very closely. We don't want to be um, committing into anything, right? Whether if it is a long or whether if it is a short, prematurely. So let me do it. Polka dot, dot against BTC. So for dot against BDC, here we are. Uh, yeah, we still have our downside targets for dot against BDC. We still remain adamant, uh, at least at least target number one. But I suspect even if we hit uh, target number two, we're not going to stop there. We're probably going to drop and take out the lows over here for dot against BTC. So if that were to happen, uh, okay, let's not, not count that. We just count it to uh, the target over here. It's 24%. Another 24% towards the downside for DOT against BTC. DOT against USDT, we still have our $3.33 uh, target. So, yeah, uh, is this it? You know, uh, Are we going to start reversal from here, right? An inverse head and shoulders, a slanted one maybe. And then we break higher? Yes? No? Not too sure, right? I mean, of course, if this happens, of course, we'll be going uh, super crazy long for DOT against USDT, but... We still don't see the reversal chart pattern yet. Uh, moreover, there are clusters of stop sales over here and here, right? Clear support line. Yeah, so we, we may just do something like this and take out all of the clusters of stop sales. Yep, absolutely possible. So watch out, watch out for that. Uh, where is this top? Shiba Inu, ship against USDT. I heard that there's some discontent in uh, the world of Shiba Inu, right? Uh, uh, the lead developer of Shiba Inu getting banned from Discord. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So there's <laughs> there's war going on. I think Shiba Inu is like breaking into two. It's being divided, uh, and yeah, it's, it is what it is, right? Um, yeah. So that's right for Shiba Inu. I did mention before that uh, there's a possibility of a uh, very very uh, scary. Uh, we don't see it here. Ship, uh, dude. Dude, yeah. Oh no. Uh, okay, this is out of alignment. A little bit. Sorry. Give me one minute. One minute to get things back into uh, alignment. Okay. Uh, where are we? Shiba Inu. Yes, sir. So, wait. Hang on. Binance. We look at it here. Um, ship. Dude. You doing so for Shiba Inu? Yeah, there's a huge, 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 huge head and shoulders happening over here, right? Uh, I think you have to shift to regular. Okay, no, I still don't see it on regular. This is just absolute insanity. So, yeah, there's a very big head and shoulders here that could be forming, right? Left shoulder, very big head, very big right shoulder. I mean, small right shoulder. Yeah, we could be having lower, right? So, yeah, things are just not. All rainbows are in the front of uh, Shiba Inu. And there's a very clear support line over here, right? Um, yeah, very, very clear support. Uh, and it's being defended. I don't know how much longer it's going to get defended. Could we see a spike above the skinny pink line? Of course. Uh, but I, I suspect we're still going to come back down, you know. No matter how far we go, I suspect we're still going to come back down eventually. Uh, but to be honest, I would prefer it if we just break the support line uh, as fast as possible so that we can start our recovery as fast as possible. Absolute best case scenario, right, for the bull case. Uh, but yeah, again, we'll, we'll have to see how things go first though. This could turn out to be a descending triangle by itself. Uh, and so if that happens, then yeah, there could be an opportunity for a trade. Um, but if we break the skinny pink line, we consolidate and continue higher, then we'll be looking out for the five ways, right? One, two, three, four, five. And after that, yeah, I, I, I still suspect that Shiba Inu is going to head back down. Unless, unless, of course, we go all the way back up. Ah. Uh, then that's a different story. But will it happen? Only time will tell. Only time will tell. Litecoin, let us say up against BTC. So for Litecoin against BTC, we're in a consolidation. We have already 
flipped bullish, right, for Litecoin against BDC. But Litecoin has a knack of going above the skinny pink line and coming back down, up and down. So will this be the same thing, up and down? I got say much more. Uh, but if you were to go up and down, I would love it if uh, LTC could do something like this, right? A very nice symmetrical triangle. And then we break higher, right? We build the base for a rocket launch to the moon. This would be the best thing. Uh, for Litecoin against BTC. But again, uh, we could also be doing something like this, right? One, two, three, right? So four, five, something like that as well. All right, as the skinny pink line starts curving up. So the bullish trend remains intact and we don't come back down. Best case, best bullish case scenario for Litecoin against BTC. Litecoin against USDT. Uh, here we are. Yeah, so the thing I don't like about Litecoin against USDT is that we're in a very slow crawl up. This is not ideal. I would prefer us to, again, go full send up, right? Or we build a base and we break out, right? Best, best thing that could happen, right? We build a base and we break out from, right? Where is the base? You may consider this as a base, but it's a small one. Small base, small rally, right? Big base, big rally. So we're going to have to see how things go, right? Uh, this, this is a little bit similar to something like this, right? You might think that we're going back up towards the all-time high, but no, what happened? We came back down, right? You might think we're going back towards all-time high, maybe triple digits, but yeah, it's, I, I, I can feel the weakness uh, on like Litecoin already. So be careful, right? Again, Litecoin has a neck of going above the skinny pink line and coming back down, right? So the same thing could be happening over here as well, right? We could be getting a maybe a slant at the and shoulders sort of a chart pattern as we head towards uh, 30, 33 or 30 dollars right and if this happens and we build head and shoulders this will be brutal uh, and like when yeah may not be you know surviving so we'll see we'll see how it goes right we have a very big absolute crazy bearish scenario for uh litecoin but we'll see how it goes first right we shall see we'll take it one step at a time tron against btc we have already crossed the skinny pink line this is not good for tron against btc uh and we were hoping for tron uh, to head towards 640 right now i feel like we're heading towards 192 and there's a possibility that we could, we could still take out the lows over here right and we could head all the way back down to uh sub 100 for Tron against BTC. That is not good. That is not good. So if you were to head towards sub 100, this is going to be yeah, 60%, which is which is going to tie in very well with our bearish bias for uh, Tron because we have these three crazy targets towards the downside. The final target is at 1.4 cents, uh, which is 75% away from where the price is right now. And, you know, I, it's, the boys and I are actually monitoring Tron very closely. And of course, the, you know, we would love to trade it if Tron really does drop that low. Uh, but again, <laughs> Tron is, is, is very highly manipulated uh, and it is very difficult uh, to put on uh, shots for Tron. Uh, because every time there is a, you know, price, I mean, every time the price gets pulled down, it gets pushed back up, you know, it pulls down, it gets pushed back up, right? But you can see that uh, the highs keep getting lower, we keep getting lower highs. Uh, and so I, I feel like it's just uh, eventually uh, only a matter of time uh, before Tron uh, starts collapsing all the way back down to 1.5 cents. I could be wrong, uh, and if we head towards the 15 cents, price area then hey this could be a very big consolidation for more upside to come for tron and all should hail justin sun for performing absolute magic uh, for tron uh, but yeah tron is looking very weak for me at this point of time yes we're already above the resistance support it's turning to support right uh, once resistance broken it becomes support uh, we were above it and if we were to hit above the skinny pink line then potentially Tron could be switching bullish. So we are also pre prepared uh, for the possibility of things turning bullish and we would love to take on trades of Tron if it does switch bullish. But yeah, at this point of time, we will still maintain with our bias, uh, our bearish bias. If, if um, Tron goes above, let's say 7.5 cents, then all of these targets will be gone, absolute gone. Uh, and so yeah, the bearishness of the uh, chart pattern you know this chart pattern is going to dissolve doesn't mean we can't form a much much bigger bearish chart pattern right but again we have to take things one step at a time and right now i don't think it's wise to be opening shots so yeah there we go that's our take for tron
AVEX against BTC. Here is uh, Avalanche. We have a target over here at 47,000 Satoshis. We are at 75,000. Uh, again, clusters of stop cells here and here. So I suspect, absolute suspect that uh, this could be a maybe a descending triangle uh, where we head lower for AVEX against BTC. Right. Absolutely possible. Uh, we still remain bias bearish. We still expect uh, AVEX to hit its target at 47,000 Satoshis. Okay, 4,007, right? This is the figure on the chart. 4,007, we still expect AVEX to hit. So, yeah, there you go. AVEX against USDT. Ooh, what's happening? What's happening, boys? AVEX against USDT. Here we are. We have a target at $9 and then $7.60. Uh, again, the fear, there's always the fear that uh, AVEX could form a head and shoulders. Can you see this? Oh boy. Right, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. We, we could go way, way past $7. Way past $7. I, I can't say how much. Uh, we need to see the right shoulder form first. If, if there is a real, true, high quality head and shoulders, oh boy. Uh, then AVEX will go really, really, really low. But but for now, we will stick to our $9 and $7 target. Uh, and yeah, we, we are still buyers bearish. Yes, we are aware that there's a rally uh, on for AVEX. And yes, uh, we are aware that, you know, AVEX could turn into a inverse head and shoulders over here, right? Something like that, right under the nose of the skinny pink line. And then, boom, we break out for AVEX against USDT. Absolutely possible, but yeah, I just don't see it at this point of time. So... Stay safe, stay freaking safe. Uniswap, Uni against BTC. Uh, yeah, so Uni against BTC, we have already crossed the skinny pink line, right? And we actually crossed it with a big red candlestick. So this is not ideal. Uh, and we actually took out the lows over here. So we were actually hoping for Uniswap to, you know, uh, consolidate here a little bit longer before heading higher. But we've already crossed the skinny pink line, so... What's the story, Morning Glory? But we actually took out the whole lows though. So could, could this still turn bullish? Of course. How could this turn bullish? We get an, again, inverse head and shoulders. But we are, we are under the skipping client, so I'm not really comfortable with it at this point of time. Uh, could we see... Uh, yeah, River, of course. Uh, could we even head lower? Yes. Uh, this could be a mountain one. We come down for mountain number two. Mountain number three, big descending triangle. Uniswap collapses against BTC. Right, so I am not so sure if this is what's going to happen. I hope that Uniswap uh, does see some buying pressure coming back in uh, to push the price higher. But yeah, things are just not really looking good for Uniswap at this point of time. So again, be very, very careful. Just because we see lower highs doesn't mean things are going to uh, reverse back up, right? Lower highs. Can you see it? All along the way, you can find lower highs. Lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. And we just kept dropping, right? So again, we are forming lower highs. Just because we are seeing lower highs doesn't mean we're going to break uh, all of these clusters of stop buys to go higher. Doesn't mean that we could still hit much lower. So be very, very careful about uh, rushing into a trade too soon for Uniswap. Atom, Atom against BTC. Uh, here we are for Atom. Still in a very big consolidation. Uh, I suspect we could still hit lower. We are always, you know, Atom has a neck of going in and out the skinny pink line. So I think that's what's happening right now. Uh, I think we could, we could be coming back down under the skinny pink line, right? Uh, upper half, we come back down to the lower half. And after that, we rally back towards the upper half and then the lower half. Hopefully, hopefully we get some sort of a squeeze over here, right? Uh, hopefully it's a symmetrical triangle and boom! Atom goes crazy, goes bananas against uh, BTC. Atom against USDT. Yeah, we're right, we're right at the cusp of greatness. Okay, we're right at the skinny pink line. So, ride or die, right? Uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, we get proper consolidation over here. Uh, inverse head and shoulders, right? Get a very nice right shoulder. And then we blast off. That's it. And we don't look back. Uh, and Atom beats Sayonara to everybody. Right? Sayonara, bitches! Sayonara! Right, best case scenario for Atom. Yeah, but we just don't see it yet. Uh, and Atom is largely, largely in, uh, just not tradable, right? Uh, if you could, we could do something like this, right? An ascending triangle as well, right? Valley one, valley two, valley three, head higher, right above the skinny pink line, starts curving back up. Bullish trend confirmed. But yeah, again, we still don't see it yet. Could we still see the bearishness continue? Of course, we get mountains, we head lower. So the danger is still there. You know, we're not out of the woods for uh, Cosmos yet. Ton coin, ton, 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 ton against BTC. We are, 
Yeah, we're in a correction. Uh, any clear bearish chart patterns for Ton BDC? No. Is this the end? We are not too sure. Can you count the waves? I think this would be a one, two. I can see three waves. I don't know if it's going to be five waves or three waves. You know, uh, but I don't think Ton BDC is a tradable coin, tradable pair at this point of time. Not to me. Ton against USDT. Yeah, it feels to me like we could be coming back down. Coming back down too. Take out all of these clusters off. Stop sales and all of this as well. Right, pom pom pom, which will be good because this will tie in to the squeeze. Right, A B C D E, boom, and we build a solid base uh, for ton against uh, USDT. Ton might drop down to like I don't know sub one dollar. <gasps> it would be a dream, wouldn't it? Uh, and for sub one dollar, uh, imagine you get it at let's say one dollar, right? Uh, and in, uh, for some reason, for some crazy reason, right? Uh, eventually, during the bull run, uh, Ton heads up to ten dollars. This could be a ten x yo. This could be a ten x. Uh, but again, you have to be patient, right? Uh, not everything is going to <laughs> turn out the way I expect it to. But yeah, we are still expecting a, a, a proper correction. I don't think this is it for uh, Ton, right? I could see an A and a B. Looks like a C is in the in the cards. Feels to me like a C is in the cards. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see how things go. But Ton is not looking the bullish to me, not at this point of time. Uh, eventually, we might continue with our bullish trend, but yeah, not yet. Chain link, link against BTC. We are here. Yeah, we've came back down under the skinny pink line. We have so much hopes. We broke above the skinny pink, skinny pink line. We broke above the uh, resistance line, and we were expecting consolidation to hit higher. But no, what happened? We get pulled down, right? Uh, I think we have already taken out. Have we? Okay, I think we almost took this out. What's the low here? 2878. What's the low here? 2878. 2880. Oof, almost. We almost took it out. We almost took it out. Yeah, I think we're going to take it out eventually. I think we're going to take it out eventually. Uh, so the only question we have is are we going to stop at a 0 0.618 or is this going to be a 5 wave move, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Another one down. Then only do we see a full break coming on. So even, even, I mean, when things are falling, right, I would prefer it to be five waves because this is more certain, right? If it is only three waves, I'm like, yeah, it could be five. So you would never know if it's three. But if it's five, then yeah, more likely than not, there should be a strong rally coming on. Uh, like the case of BDC, right? BDC has already fallen five ways. I'm just going to detour a little bit. So if you look at BDC, you can count five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Strong rally. But the only question is, how strong is this rally going to be? Is this a rally that's going to bring us all the way back to Valhalla? Or are we going to, yeah, you know, is this going to be A, B, C, D, E kind of a chart pattern? Or is it going to be an A, B, C kind of a chart pattern? C. So that's the thing you don't know. Uh, you, that's why you have to take things one step at a time, right? So yeah, that's chain link BDC, link USDT. Do we see it? Yeah, so link USDT. We still have two targets towards the downside, uh, 385 and 347. Well, we've gotten this target way back in September, October, November, December, January. It's been four months and we're still adamant at this point of time that there is still more downside to come for link against USDT. I can count four waves. Four. One, two, three, four. There should be another one down. Five. There should be five waves down for link. I don't know what it is. Uh, there should be some news. Probably it's going to come for crypto as a whole. Or maybe it just could be, you know, chain link by itself. But I'm expecting more downside to come for chain link. And if we were to head towards uh, both targets, it is going to be another 50% for chain link. It's going to be insane, right? From 670 to 340. Absolute brutality. Uh, so again, that's why you, you have to be very careful about rushing to a trade too soon because you never know if there could still be more downside. I, I mean, again, I, I've been monitoring uh, crypto, Twitter, and a lot of people have already switched uh, bullish and they were trying to uh, encourage you <laughs> uh, to stay on that. I mean, to start buying stuff. I'm not saying that they are wrong. I'm just saying that yeah, it's, I'd rather be late, you know. Uh, to each his own, yeah, to each his own, uh, and I want to have um, surety, you know, I, I, I don't want to be right, you know, there are two paths to take, you want to be right or you want to make money, I'm here to make money, not to be right, link, next would be, where is this, Leo, right, Leo is uh, Bitfinex's native token, Leo against BDC, 
Okay, we have already waterfall down uh, the skinny pink line. We're heading towards our target. One, two, five, zero. We've had this target way back. Okay, no, way back <laughs> on the 18th of January, which was last week. And we're still expecting, yeah, to hit uh, one, two, five, zero. I suspect, I suspect uh, we're going to take out the lows over here. Right, so if that happens, this is going to be another 25%. Still a long way down for Leo against BDC. Leo against USD. Yeah, I think we're still going to hit lower, right? And I still think that we are going to be taking out all uh, the clusters over here. All the clusters of stop buys. Uh, sorry, stop sells. Pum, 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 pum. And then maybe do we see some sort of a uh, rally, right? Again, uh, we're already under the skinny pink line. The skinny pink line has started curving back down. And so the trend has already switched bearish for Leo against USD. Uh, Monero. Monero is a, a coin that has, that has also started <laughs> turning bearish. I'm like, okay. Uh, we have a target over here though. Uh, so there is the possibility that we could still remain with our uh, bullish trend. We're above the skinny pink line. So yeah, if you could consolidate and continue higher, that'd be awesome. But uh, Leo could also be heading back down, right? This whole thing could be a big, big symmetrical triangle in the making, right? An A, B, C, D, E kind of a chart pattern in the making. And then we break higher. Something like that. My guess is it's something like that. So yeah, again, I, I wouldn't consider Monero as a tradable coin at this point of time. Monero against USDT, yeah, we're above the skinny pink line. So the question is, will we stay above the skinny pink line? Or will we start um, you know, breaking the resistance line as well? Because there's a very clear resistance line over here that has three touches. It's all by design. It's all by design. Are we gonna break the resistance going higher? Or are we gonna hit lower, right? For maybe, I don't know, head and shoulders. Head lower? Yes? No? We are not too sure. We are not too sure. Ethereum Classic against BTC. Here we are. Ethereum Classic again. <laughs> I think we're going to head lower. I don't think this is it for ETC. Uh, this looks like potentially three waves down, right? A, B, yeah, C. I suspect it's an ABC kind of a chart pattern. But it's very important uh, that we maintain the squeeze, right? Lower highs and hopefully a higher low. But if it is a lower low, then it's no longer a squeeze. I would prefer it to be a squeeze. So we'll, we'll see how it goes first though. But in terms of our tradability, I don't think that's a trade. I don't see the bearish continuation chart pattern towards the downside. So not particularly tradable on the micro. On the macro, yes, we could see it. Uh, but yeah, it's not, not what I would consider as tradable. Uh, it's just that, you know, we are still bias bearish for Ethereum Classic. Bitcoin Cash against BTC. Uh, yeah, it's not good. Why? Because we are forming a potential head and shoulders. You see that? Do you see that? Left shoulder, head. Are we going to get a right shoulder over here? If this happens, Bitcoin Cash against BTC is going to drop very, very low. I don't want to see that, but the possibility remains that Bitcoin Cash continue its journey down to yeah, towards, I don't know, zero. Oh boy, it's not good. It's not good, All right? So yeah, just, bec just because, uh, you know, you see strong rallies coming on doesn't mean that the trend has already switched bearish. We're still under the skinny pink line. The trend is still uh, bearish, right? Even though we broke it, uh, again, we, we still need to see consolidation above the skinny pink line before calling the uh, bullish reversal because we got slapped down. We rose up, we got slapped again. So are we going to get slapped again? Yeah. You got slap, baby slap, slap, slap. And then, yeah, now we, here we are. So you got to be careful, boys and girls. We got to be careful. Bitcoin Cash against USD. Yeah, again, we remain uh, with the potential super duper ABCD kind of a chart pattern, right? We've already broken the resistance line. We're expecting things to continue higher. But uh, if Bitcoin Cash against BDC is forming, you know, uh, a proper head and shoulders, then yeah, it's not going to be good. It's very important the lows over here hold so that we can get a very gigantic uh, chart pattern, right? But if we head lower, we take out the lows over here, then yeah, that's just, that's just too bad for us if it does happen, right? Because that's what happened for Litecoin against BTC. Uh, I, was re I remember that we were looking at Lite Litecoin from time to time to time again, uh, and we were expecting the lows over here, right? Replay! Yep, something like that. Right, something, okay, let's just draw this properly, right? A, B, C, you're gonna ignore the weak. D, E, we break out. This would be amazing, right? This would be awesome and brilliant if it happened. But yeah, such is life, you know, you don't always get what you want. And that's why you have to take things one step at a time, right? 
So look at what happened. Look at what happened, right? Look at what, what happened. Did we break higher? No. What happened? We took out the lows over here. Once you took out, take out the lows over here, things get really, really messy. So yeah, again, could this turn bullish? Of course, something like a inverse head and shoulders maybe. Very slanted one, uh, falling channel. Yes, yes. So how much lower are we gonna fall down this channel? Yeah, that's the thing. That's the freaking thing. We would love to see proper uh, bullish reversals, but we just don't see it yet. So yeah, be careful about going to a trade too soon for Bitcoin Cash. Stellar Lumens against BTC. Here we are. Uh, we have a fresh, fresh target out of the oven at 293. We're at 400 uh, Satoshis right now. So this is still another 26% more to go for Stellar Lumens against BTC. Just like, uh, like coin against BTC, we're in a downtrend. Right, we're in a falling channel. So that's why the question will always be, how much lower are we going to go? Right, at this point of time, when you saw the rally coming on, you might think that this could be the reversal, right? You might think that, hey, we're going back up. Yeah, but uh, I mean, if you are sound in technical analysis, you'll be able to see that we could be doing something like this, right? Uh, where is this? Yeah, we could be doing something like this. You can see mountain ranges, the potential for a big, big descending triangle for stellar lumens to collapse all the way back down, right? The possibility still remains uh, for stellar lumens uh, to head towards, um, yeah, much, much lower. And so we are kind of getting it right now. Yeah. So it's not exactly, you know, textbook perfect, uh, like what you would expect, but this is a, something like a support line as well, right? And you can also consider this as something like a descending triangle. Not exactly, but something like that. Uh, and we could go much, much, much lower. We'll take things one step at a time, uh, one by one. So 293 will be the first target. We are, we are starting to get downside targets uh, for Stellar Lumens against BTC. We would love to see uh, proper you know, uh, trend reversals, but not at the moment. I just don't see it yet for Stellar Lumens. So be very, very careful about rushing to a trade too soon for Stellar Lumens. Quant against BTC. For Quant, Quantanamera. We're above the skinny pink line. Uh, okay, this, this could, you could see this uh, on, you know, with either bearish lenses or with bullish lenses as well. Bearish lens is, yeah, we are forming a descending triangle, kind of a chart pattern. We could be breaking back under the skinny pink line. The bullish lenses uh, would tell us that, yeah, we could be curving back up, right? We're consolidating for a break back up for uh, quant against BTC because we're above the skinny pink line. And so our bullish bias remains for quant against BTC. Quant against USDT, dude, quant USDT. Uh, yeah, quant against USDT is above the skinny pink line. So we could still continue higher, right? Maybe get a cup and handle over here, something like that. Right, this whole thing is a one, two, three, four, five. Best bullish case scenario. But uh, the bearish scenario is we hit lower, right? You see mountains, 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 descending triangle, we hit lower. Descending triangle becomes falling channel. You see that? Do you see that, boys and girls? Yeah, it ties in very nicely uh, if we were to hit lower. If we hit uh, higher as well, we need to see proper consolidation above the skinny pink line for us to maintain our bullish bias for quant against USDT. But the potential is there. So again, we'll have to take things one step at a time. Uh, if anything, I still feel that uh, potentially we could still head back down to take out all of these clusters and we could still head back down to uh, double digits for quant against USDT. So if I were to be a fan of quant, I would wait for it to potentially drop towards double digits again. Again, no guarantees uh, that it is going to happen. So yeah, I just don't see the chart pattern um, either way, whether it's bullish towards um, Valhalla or bearish towards hell. So stay safe and don't rush into uh, a trade too soon for quads. I guess that's it for today's Crypto Top 30. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Ta-da!